Um, so our problem with this comes in when we want to change the shape of the building. So right now it's like this boring office that you see you know, anywhere in Irvine. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what it is. No, there's nothing interesting in Irvine. Um, so we're going we're gonna to spice it up a little bit, right? We're going to rotate this building and kind of twist it. Um, you guys remember how to twist things? Rotate, yeah. So let's go to um, surface, or I'm sorry, um, transform, Euclidean, and we're going to use um, rotate. What's cool about this particular orientation of rotating things is I could just do it right in a plane because, I mean, it's a building with a profile, and uh, yeah, I'm going to twist it up. So let's go to rotate. Um, I'm going to leave the base where it is. I'm going to rotate the roof and start twisting this thing. So um, the roof is actually going to be um, this polyline curve right here. So I'm going to go to um, surface analysis and plug it in here. So see how it gave me that point up top? Um, I'm going to plug that in to G. Oh, I'm sorry, um, P. So that's going to be the basis, the, the base point of where my rotation is going to happen. Um, the geometry I'm going to rotate is this, which is the curve. Um, and you're going to see, uh, how do I want to orient this? <laughs> I don't like the way this is structured. but um, So we've got the angle. So you guys remember that in order to get the angle, we need to put it in radians, right? And in order to get radians, we do what? You do that all the time. You say an answer, and then when I can't hear you and I ask, you don't tell me again. Half the time, I bet you're right. So let's go to math, and let's go to trig, like the rest of you are saying. Um, and we're going to convert degrees to radians. So we'll plug that in here. Um, so we need to put a degree value in here. So let's go zero is less than, um, I probably don't want to rotate it any more than um, 90. So let's go to zero to 90. There we go. So we're going to start rotating this curve a little bit. That looks about suitable to me. Just a little twist, right? Like nothing, nothing fancy. Um, so a 20 degree twist. We have a new, um, a new, what do I want to call it? Um, rectangle profile that I'm going to work with. So I'm going to yank this all to the side and replace this connection with loft. So actually, I didn't need to move it that far, but whatever. Um, disconnect. I'm going to disconnect this one, and I'm going to plug this one in instead. And therein lies your problem. Why is that a problem? Exactly. So it rotated the mass of the building, but it didn't rotate the floors. So now, there are a bunch of different ways to correct this issue. Um, what I do kind of want to show you is how we can create like a, a sort of kind of um, condition that is similar to this. But we're gonna get a, we're gonna get really dynamic, I think, with this because we're gonna start rotating it a bunch of different ways. So I think what I would prefer to do with you is is basically give you like the mass of the building and show you how to cut floors out of that. Because um, we're gonna not only are we gonna rotate them in this direction, but we're also gonna start sort of tweaking them in three dimensions, so it gets really interesting. So what happens when you take one of these floor plates and you start tilting it? means it's no longer a floor plate. Um, so uh, yeah, anyway, so that is the problem. I just wanted to present to you the problem before we start correcting it. Um, the way that I'm going to correct it is by using the mass that we've created and using a subtractive uh, function. So um, how, let me see how we're doing on time for this video. Oh, we're only at four minutes. OK, so basically, let's start. Um, erasing some of the floors that we generated this way 
and we're going to start creating new floors um, a different way. So we have, um, basically we have the polygon here, we have uh, the polyline curve, that is our base floor, we have the ones that we've moved, and then we have the roof, right? It's fine that they've moved. That's not the problem. The problem is that they no longer map to the volume that we've created. So um, rather than moving floors that are kind of the, the exact profile of the building, what I'm opting to do, and the way I kind of like to do it so I don't have to worry about it, is I'm just going to scale that first floor up like three times the size of the building and then just cut off all the excess using the volume of the building. Does that make sense? I'll show you what I mean. Uh, let's go to transform, affine, we're going to go to scale, and we're now working sort of back here in the beginning again. Um, we're going to plug that in, the base geometry. Um, we're going to need the center point, so let's go to surface, area, um, center point of the scale feature, and then we're going to need the scaling factor. So this can be a static number, something like three times the size is going to be plenty. So now I have this gigantic rectangle that just sits around the entire volume of my building. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do with that is move those instead. So I could create the surfaces first or not. Um, but I think it's fine to just leave them off here to the side. So let's go to, um, let's just kind of in, in insert this into move. Okay, so that created an issue with what we're moving and how we're moving it. So the trouble is that I have this sort of massive floor plate that I'm trying to cut um, surfaces with using that volume, but I actually still need this particular um, polyline curve. So that won't really be the answer because most of this is all right. The only thing that we don't need anymore is um, this, the extra floors. So you take those extra floors out. I don't need to see um, any of this or this or these, right? All I needed was the one surface that I moved to create that twisted volume. So that also means I don't need my series anymore. All I need is the, the first one that I moved, which is going to be this base geometry, and it's going to be in the Z direction, and it's going to be um, however high I want to create it. So actually, I am going to keep this series for something else, but I'm going to create a new value here. Um, so let's say our building is, um, we did, however many floors. Well, let's actually, let's kind of stick with this. So we do have a series. Let me pause for a moment. Do you guys understand what I'm doing? No. Okay. You guys can stop me if I'm completely losing you. So what I'm doing, okay. See this middle section? All that that I just did was separating this middle section from the volume of the building, right? So I wanted to create something else that's going to cut through the building like that, right? And then something that's going to give me a base floor and a top floor that I can use to create the volume. Okay, so now now these items are totally separate. Does that make sense? So I know that in terms of like what I did in the definition, it's gonna take some learning to know exactly how I sort of broke this thing down um, and, and some experience with it, that's fine. I want you to understand the concept of what I'm doing, right? So instead of Instead of building this thing from the ground up, right? This floor, that floor, that floor, that floor, that floor, and then walk and then twist, right? I'm reconstructing it by doing it in, in a different way. I'm creating the floor and the roof, twisting it, and then on the side, I'm creating 
floor plates that are going to cut with that volume. Yes, yeah, it's a Boolean function. Um, so that's why I'm like reversing. Now, instead of having all this information flow down here through the bottom of this definition, I'm actually creating something else, right? That's, that's these things that are going to be used to cut and create floor plates. So I'm, I'm bifurcating some of this information into two separate ideas now. So let me go here and pull this down so you kind of understand what's going on. Now, um, the other thing I'm doing is I'm thinking ahead because I'm thinking about how tall the building is, right? Um, I'm still going to define floor plates, right? Those floor plates are still going to be defined by here to here to here and to here. And then there is still a value that will measure from here to here. Right now, that is tied to this series, okay? That series is only creating the first and last of those elements right now, but I'm going to use the math for how it got there to set my roof value so my roof value stretches with whatever I change. Okay? I know it's a lot to handle. I think I'm going to pause this video because it's like over 10 minutes now, and we're going to move into how to actually calibrate the floor plates and, and height of the building in a separate isolated video. What questions do you have before I stop this one, though? Yes. Okay, I'll come troubleshoot while we're in between.